I'd like to welcome everyone who is listening this afternoon to the this message. We, my name is John McCann, and we want to make the gospel known, linked to the believers who gather to the Lord's name at Lima Valley Gospel Hall. Thank you for tuning in, and we trust that you will be blessed for eternity as a result of hearing the gospel. Now, before reading the Word of God, I want to. Uh, look to the Lord and for his help in prayer. Let us pray. Our blessed God and Father, we bow before thee with thanksgiving for the mercies that attend our way. We give thanks for the Lord Jesus. Thank thee for Calvary. Thank thee for the one that thou didst give to the shame and suffering of the cross. We thank thee for his resurrection. We thank thee we have a living Saviour to present. And there now, at thine own right hand, there is one who is able to save to the uttermost all that come unto God through him. We look to thee that thou wouldst help us today as we turn to thy holy word and we just pray for divine help, not only for those of us that speak, but also for those that listen. O oh God, we would long that men and women would take stock for eternity and think about where they will be forever and that very soon we might have the joy of hearing souls of souls being saved as a result of these messages going out over the internet. We pray thy blessing upon thy holy word now as we turn to its pages and look to thee for blessing in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'm going to be speaking to you during the following three weeks and it is my intention to take up the same chapter on each occasion. That chapter is Luke's Gospel and in chapter 15. Luke's Gospel chapter 15 and we're going to commence this afternoon in verse number 1. Luke's Gospel chapter 15 and verse 1. Then drew near unto him, unto the Lord Jesus, all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you? Having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth to gather his friends and neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. And that will suffice for a reading and with the Lord's blessing. This beautiful chapter of the Bible we often turn to when we preach the gospel. And we have reason to do just that. Because here we have a number of very precious truths brought before us. We're going to speak about sinners. We're going to speak about the Saviour. We're going to speak about salvation. We're going to speak about the satisfaction of heaven over one person, one sinner coming to know Christ as Saviour. One sinner being found. One sinner obtaining the salvation of their precious soul. One wonders when we make uh, recordings like this, who is it that speaking, uh, we're speaking to? Maybe I'm speaking to someone and you would just long to have the same joy and satisfaction that heaven, heaven has. You would love to know your uh, soul, that your soul has been saved. Friend, can I tell you today, that is the reason why we make these recordings. You can be saved. There is salvation for you. It's found in the Lord Jesus. It's not found in a church. It's found in the one that this chapter speaks about. Now, what does it tell us about the Lord Jesus? The, the, at the commencement of the chapter, first of all, there are people that are attracted to him. Publicans and sinners drew near to hear him. Their ears were opened. You know, I would love to think that your ears are open today to listen up, uh, to something about the Saviour. But you know, there, 
is another group of people at this commencement of this chapter. Then not only there's, there is a group of those that wanted to hear, but there was a group of religious fanatics, and they murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. You know, friend, I don't know if these people really understood the truth that they were expressing in their criticism. Because the Saviour still receiveth sinners. And for all eternity, the result of salvation will be this. We're going to be in the in heaven. We're going to eat with him. Thank God he, he receiveth sinners today and he eateth with them. To answer the criticism of these religious men, the Lord Jesus, I believe, spoke one parable and it really extends right through the chapter. But you know, it's a, a parable with three parts. And today I'm only going to be speaking on the first part with the help of God and uh, subsequent uh, Lord's days. We want to speak about the other two parts. They're very precious. But I want to speak today first about the first part of the parable. I want you to notice uh, before going into the parable that we, really we have the three members of the Godhead represented in the three parts of this parable. We're going to be speaking today about the shepherd and everyone knows that the good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep was the Lord Jesus himself. Next week with the help of God I want to speak on the woman that lost her coin and I'm going to show you the, the work of the Spirit of God who's in the world today to convince of sin and also to interest people in the Saviour. Then we're going to, the last uh, uh, Lord's Day that we will be here, we're going to be speaking about the Father, the Father that lost the Son. And I believe it illustrates for us the love of the heart of God toward uh, a wayward uh, sinner. And we're going to see how the prodigal son represents the interest of God himself. So we have the interest of the shepherd. We have the interest of the spirit. We have the interest of the father in the salvation of one soul. Well, for just a few moments now, I want you to think with me about two things that we have at the start of this parable. I want to speak on a strange sheep and I want to speak upon a seeking saviour, a seeking shepherd. You know, I love that. A strained sheep, a seeking shepherd. You know, we read here, the Lord Jesus said, that this man, what man have you, he said, having an hundred sheep, and he lose one. Our natural re reaction could be, well, one is lost. I have 99. I don't care about the other. That's not the shepherd of this passage. You know, friend, can I say to you, the Lord Jesus is interested in you. The, the Lord Jesus, who is the shepherd here, is showing his interest in the individual, in one. What had happened, that sheep? It had strayed. But not only had it strayed, it had been discovered that it was lost. You know, there's something about uh, the sin that a sinner commits. Not only does it cause a distance between himself and God. It's a disaster. It leaves all of us know as sheep alone at a distant place. Is a sheep in danger? Friend, if you know not the Saviour today, if you've never come to know him as your, as your Lord and Saviour, you're at a distance. You're in danger. You should be filled with the dismay today to understand this parable is speaking about me. I'm lost. I'm far away. Far away from God. You know, I, I, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking of another passage. It's found in Ephesians chapter 2. The Apostle Paul one day had entered the city of Ephesus. And later he wrote a, a letter to that church. And he, he reminds those that got saved. He said, remember that time. You were without God. You were without Christ. You were afar off, without hope, 
You know, that's just exactly the picture that this parable is, is designing for us. Exactly the situation of a person that knows not Christ as Saviour. Not only do we have the strange sheep, not only do we have the situation that it describes of a person far away from God, well, thank God, it tells us of the shepherd. What did he do? He left the ninety and nine in the wilderness and he went after to seek for the sheep that was lost. You know, in this very gospel, chapter 19 and verse 10, we have these wonderful words. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Friend, can I tell you, why did the Lord Jesus leave heaven? Why did he come into this world? For remember, his birth, although it was a... a in one sense, a natural birth, he was born of Mary, yet different to you and I. He existed before that birth. He was God eternal. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And he came from heaven into this world. What to do? To seek and to save that which was lost. I was one of those lost sinners and he came to save this month 53 years it will be 53 years since the night that he found and he saved me tell me friend are you saved has there ever been a moment in your life when you came to know him as your savior i'm not asking you do you belong to a church or did you go out to the front or did you sign a card or did you uh, say a prayer that's not what i'm talking about it's a moment when you were found. What a moment it must have been for this sheep. Just before, I want to mention something before I go into that. You know it says here that he seeks until he find it. There's a parallel parable. It's very similar, but there's a difference. Find in Matthew's Gospel and in chapter 18. The difference is this. There it says, And if he find it yes it speaks about one lost sheep it speaks about the shepherd seeking for the sheep ah but there is a difference there's no guarantee that the sheep will be found friend that's the reality of it i'm speaking to someone perhaps and you've heard the gospel for many many years and yet you're still not saved Friend, it would be an awful thing to go through life and never be found. Never come to know the Saviour. Never get God's salvation. That's why we're here today. We want to warn you of the danger that it would be to die in your sin and to die without Christ and be lost for all eternity. Well, we're going to go back to the parable. He, ser he sought. He searched. Thank God there was a moment when he found the sheep that was lost. You know, this is an experience, a real experience in the life of an individual. When we find Christ, when he finds us, you know, when he find this sheep, if it had been I, perhaps, I would have punished the sheep for its, its strain. No, he didn't do that. He found it, and with joy, he led it upon his, uh, not, please note these words, he led it upon his shoulders. What security? What satisfaction? What a place this sheep enjoyed, being brought back to the fold. You know, a person that's, that finds the Saviour, or a person that he finds, because it's the same experience when we trust him as our saviour and he saves us. From that moment, do you know where we are? Everyone that's saved. We have the security of knowing that he is our saviour. And you know what the Bible says? It's an absolute impossibility for such a person to be lost, to perish. 
You know, I love those that, those words that we have about the shepherd in John's Gospel, chapter 10. He's the good shepherd. But before the end of that chapter, he says, I give unto my sheep eternal life, and they shall never perish. I don't know too much about the original language of the Bible. The New Testament was written uh, in Greek. But I understand this, that for to translate that word, never, you read into English, or even into the language I normally speak, Portuguese, we would have to repeat that word never on three times. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never, never, never perish. Why? Because we are found, in that passage we're found in his hand, and in the Father's hand. In this passage, we're found upon his shoulders. You know, when I was a boy, I heard a, a hymn been, been sung. It was an unusual hymn. But I've often thought about the words, carried on the shoulders of the shepherd. You know, that's a wonderful truth that a person that's saved knows. That we have been carried home by him. And our arrival in heaven is secure. It's sure. We know where we're going. We're going to be with Christ, which is far better. But there's something more here. There's the sheep that stred. There is the shepherd that searched and found. But there's the satisfaction of those that heard of the safe arrival of the shepherd, of the sheep. You know, we read here, he calleth together when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and his neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Rejoice with me. He had the first joy. Oh, I love that. The first joy is it pertains to the shepherd himself. Ah, but he said, likewise, I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that gets saved. There's a word here that I want to mention. We're going to deal with it more on another, uh, another weekend. It's the word repenteth. You see, it's just a, a parable that we have here. The sheep itself had, was lost. It couldn't do anything. But for you and I, we are lost sheep, but we, do, we need to repent. What does that mean? Take sides with God against ourselves. Admit God is right, and I'm wrong. I'm the sinner. I strayed. But what's more, we're going to see him further down the chapter. It's a wonderful day when, like the prodigal son, we're willing to turn from our sin. Say farewell to this sin of the world. You see, you can't have the forgiveness of your sin and continue in it. There must be a choice. And that's the difference between professing salvation and having reality. Because God's salvation is real. That's what this chapter is all about. Heaven rejoices, not just over someone nominally saying, I become a Christian. It's someone having reality, coming to know Christ as Savior, repenting of their sin and trusting Christ. Oh, there's joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, over more than over 99 just persons that think they don't need anything. No, they don't give any joy to heaven. You know, sometimes I look back on the moment that I got salvation. I didn't know. I was just a boy of eight years of age. I didn't know that all of heaven was rejoicing. Because of a little schoolboy, that night lost, having discovered the Lord Jesus died for me, and having trusted him as my saviour, I was not only found, but I was the cause of the felicity of heaven. I was the cause of joy. And we're going to see it again next week, even amongst the angels of God. Notice well, this part of the parable tells us of what the Saviour has done. Can I point to this? For the Saviour to find you and I, he had to die on a cross. He had to shed his precious blood. What a price he paid 
that you and I could be saved. He is the good shepherd that giveth his life to save the sheep. Thank God at Calvary, he finished the work that provided salvation. And he says to you and I, come to me. You know, we can come. What a day it would be if you would come. If you were to be found by him, come to know him, whom to know is life eternal. I trust today that you will think about the sheep that strayed, the sheep that was found, the sheep that was fetched, the sheep that was brought back, but the sheep that caused the felicity of these people. They rejoiced and heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. Can I ask this as I close? When in your life was the moment that all of heaven rejoiced because of you? Because of you. That's what is the reality for a person that's saved. What a change. You know, God's salvation brings a change. The sheep was no longer far away, distant. I've been referring to that passage in Ephesians chapter 2. There we read, the apostle says, to the, these people that were so far off, he said, but now you are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That's what a person that's saved knows and enjoys. Near, nearer, we cannot be because in the person of God's Son, we are as near as he. God bless his word to every heart. The Bible is clear. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.